If you're new to print on demand, or even if you've been around for a while and you're thinking about starting up on a new print on demand marketplace, then this is the video for you. I'm gonna break down the best print on demand marketplaces in my opinion, based on my experience, and I've used all of these and I've made sales on all of these. So I'm gonna share with you the upsides and the downsides and which ones that I do recommend that are worth your time and energy. Let's make some sales. First and foremost, we'll start off with Redbubble. I use Redbubble a lot, I like Redbubble, and the biggest reason that I think you should try Redbubble if you've never heard of it or seen it before is that it is free. Redbubble is completely free to sign up, you can upload designs. It's also a very easy interface as well. You can upload one design and you can put it on a lot of different products, like 80 plus products. We're talking t-shirts and coffee mugs, things like water bottles, the list goes on and on. Another reason that I like Redbubble is that there's good SEO. And what I mean by SEO is search engine optimization. This is a very easy concept. If you type something into Google, the results that come back should be on a website that you're selling on. So you want to check that out if you're thinking about selling on that website. Type in your search terms and see what comes back. The biggest downside to Redbubble is that there's very, very high competition in many popular niches. So if you're thinking you're just going to upload some funny cat designs to Redbubble and quit your job, think again. There's some extremely competitive niches. We're talking hundreds of thousands of designs in these niches. And so what you want to do is niche down and what I mean by that is pick a niche that you think has some demand but has very low competition. I enjoy Redbubble and I use it mostly for some side hustle hobby income. Next up we've got TeePublic. I really like TeePublic. TeePublic's free to use. TeePublic's also very easy to use. The interface on it is very user intuitive. There's not too many options which I like. The prices are fixed so I don't need to monkey with a bunch of margins. And I also like the SEO, the search engine optimization, meaning if I type into Google some sort of search term for a t-shirt, chances are it's going to come back with at least one or more TeePublic results. One thing I don't like about TeePublic is I've been hearing reports lately about random banning. So people have set up these stores, they've uploaded designs that they hold the copyright to, and the TeePublic robot just shuts them down right away. It's very frustrating. So if that happens, do not proceed. Make sure to check out, say, Redbubble, for example. I've not had that experience on Redbubble. Another downside to TeePublic is that if you upload, say, 10 designs to your store, wait a couple days and then go on Google and see if it shows up. If your store is not activated for search engine optimization, your store is effectively hidden. Now, you can still promote your designs on Facebook or you could tell all your friends and family about it, but it's not really going to help you make passive income. The whole idea here is to upload some designs and let the public find it. So you want to double check about TeePublic and whether or not your store is hidden. And I have a video at the end of this video, a link to it, that will help you with TeePublic with getting the quote unquote hidden store dilemma hopefully fixed. Another one that is okay, I'm not wild about it, but Society6 is a viable option. What I like about Society6 is that there is good SEO. The search engine optimization is pretty strong on Society6. There's also a lot of traffic. A lot of customers actually go to Society6 on a regular basis, on a monthly basis. And there's a lot of repeat customers. So that's a good thing as well. A big downside for me for Society6, and one of the reasons I have not spent a ton of time on it, is that I find Society6 very time consuming. You upload one design, and then there's so many options and so many variants, it actually can be overwhelming. So I find myself turning off products and that's not a great use of my time. Another thing is that there's lots of reports about declining sales over time. Society6 has been around for a while and there's a lot of angry artists online. If you just type in, is Society6 worth it? You'll see lots of reports from people and I'm, a, I'm one of them to be honest that I've just found my sales have gone down on Society6 over time. I just find the whole thing is feeling a little old and tired. Society6 is not, to me, at the forefront of a great print-on-demand option. But if you're looking to expand your print-on-demand empire, this could be a viable option if you've already got designs created and you're just looking for another marketplace to upload them to. One that I really like is Merch by Amazon. And the reason that I like them is that they have an absolutely massive marketplace. It's Amazon, right? I mean, I just ordered an Amazon product the other day. It shows up at my house. I don't even have to leave the comfort of my home. I think Amazon's only going to grow over time. They're already massive. And to upload onto Merch by Amazon, so this would be primarily t-shirts, 
hoodies. There are some other products like what they call pop sockets. These are things that attach to your phone. But there's a massive marketplace on Amazon for these products, and it is completely free to join. It's also easy to use Merch by Amazon. The actual interface is relatively intuitive. You just upload a few keywords, you pick your products, and you're off to the races. The big downside to Merch by Amazon is that it's not free in the sense that anybody can just automatically join. You do need to apply. So it doesn't cost money. But you do need to apply, which means you, there's a good chance you could get rejected. You would apply for merch and you would, they would say no. So you want to make sure to build a good portfolio, maybe use a website like Behance, for example. And then when you apply to merch by Amazon, you have your great looking portfolio that will hopefully get you approved. Another thing I'm not wild about with merch by Amazon is that they have a tier system. When you first start out, you're in tier 10. And that only means you have 10 designs available. Now you can upload them onto different products, but even if you're in say tier 100, after a while you know they'll bump up your tier to you know, tier 25, tier 100. That's still not a lot, so it's going to take a long time to make consistent sales on Merch by Amazon, unless you get lucky and you hit that home run early on. But if not, it's a long, slow grind to get consistent sales on Merch by Amazon. The other thing is that it's extremely competitive on Merch by Amazon. And the reason I say that is not only are you competing with other artists, other Merch by Amazon uploaders, but you're actually competing with all of Amazon. So this means if somebody wants to buy a t-shirt, they're not only competing with you, know, you and your artists, but they're competing with say China, Bangladesh. Some of these companies offer extremely good price points on decent products and it's tough to compete with that price point. Another company I really like for print on demand is Displate. Displate, if you've never heard of them, they sell high-end metal prints that are like posters and they attach to the wall with magnets. It's completely free to use Displate and it's also a very easy user interface. You basically upload a design and it goes on to a template and then you just put some keywords in there, a little tiny description, and then it gets listed in your store. Another thing I really like about Displate is they absolutely have dominated this niche. So although Redbubble does sell metal or aluminum plates and there are print-on-demand suppliers, Displate is far and away the number one online metal poster store. If you want a metal poster, if you type in metal poster into Google, you're probably going to get back some sort of a Displate result. So I love the fact that they've owned this niche. They're very good at one thing. Another thing I like about Displate is that they are growing. They're adding in a number of licensed stores. So if you go into Displate, you'll notice there's legitimate licensed product stores. And then there's also artists like myself that list stuff that we've designed and that we're making sales to. So we can kind of piggyback on that legitimacy with Displate. I really like that. The downside to Displate if you're new is that you do have to apply to be on Displate and they're very picky about who they approve. They're not approving everybody all the time. So you want to make sure to go to a website like Behance and put your best foot forward, create a good looking digital portfolio to help you increase your chances of getting approved on Displate. They also have a picky upload system and what I mean by that is if you create something that's 300 dots per inch and it's the proper dimensions, it can still get rejected. And I've actually talked to Displate about this and they admit it's robotic, they're receiving hundreds of designs a day and sometimes the robot gets confused and it will reject a design and then you do a very, very slight tweak to it and then it, re it accepts the design. So it can be frustrating because they do limit the uploads every day. Another downside to Displate is they do have limited products. They basically sell metal signs and that's it. And so if you're looking for a coffee mug or a tea shirt display will not fit that bill. Another thing about display that's kind of a turnoff for a lot of customers is it is pretty expensive. A really large display, although it looks spectacular, it's quite expensive. And this can limit the number of sales that you may get, especially if you're in a very specific niche. Okay, next up is Amazon KDP. So if you're thinking print on demand, you might be thinking t-shirts and coffee mugs. Well, Amazon KDP specializes in low content books. This is things like journals, puzzle books, coloring books, basically where the content is not thousands and thousands of words. So the reason I love, love, love Amazon KDP 
is that it's completely free to join and it's completely free to upload your book. There's also absolutely massive traffic. Remember, this is Amazon and Amazon originally started out as a bookstore. So if you type in some sort of book that you're looking for, the chances are extremely high that you're going to get some sort of Amazon result. They have great massive customer base looking for actual books. They've completely dominated the low content book marketplace. So if you're making low content books, you definitely want to be part of Amazon KDP. Now the big downside to Amazon KDP, and it's very similar to a lot of successful print on demand platforms, is it's extremely competitive. Now I don't want to overlook this piece because people sometimes go, yeah, yeah, it's competitive. So what? I'm special and I'm going to make some sales. Just know that if that's true, if you are an above average artist, if you're an above average designer, if you've got an above average work ethic, just keep in mind, you may be weeks or months of consistently uploading to get one sale, two sales. Now you'll get traction over time because remember when you make a sale, Amazon wants to sell products. So it's going to move your product up the ranking. So it's really hard to crack in to that top 100 or top 200 bestseller. But if you do, it's a fantastic result and you can make some serious passive income. I want to point out, and this is related to the first point, it is very time consuming to make a book. A book has a cover, a book has a back cover, a book has an inside. And so you could have a whole day creating one book. Another one that's okay, I'm kind of middle of the road on is Zazzle. The things I like about Zazzle is that it's an established company and it's really good SEO, if that's search engine optimization, but specifically for stationary. So I'm putting that in as a disclaimer. If you type in funny greeting card, for example, you're going to get back a Zazzle result. You may not get back a lot of other results for things like t-shirts or coffee mugs. The big downside for me on Zazzle is there are so many products and you have to pick your margins. It's there's there's too many options on Zazzle and it's a bit of a deal breaker for me. Although some people really like that stuff. So hey, teach their own. For myself, I've just never really gotten into Zazzle the way I have with say Redbubble or TeePublic or Merch by Amazon. But that's not to say Zazzle couldn't be a good alternative. One thing I don't like about Zazzle now as opposed to say 15 years ago. Zazzle's a very established company, which is great, but they're extremely competitive. If you type in a search term for say even a greeting card, you're just gonna get back hundreds of thousands of results. And you do have to wonder after a while, like how many people are still buying greeting cards, right? Like it's not exactly you know 1978 anymore, right? So you wanna make sure that you're spending your time in a niche that you think you could actually get sales in. I have a love-hate relationship with Etsy. The reason I love Etsy is it is an absolutely massive marketplace. And I've had success selling print on demand on Etsy. Even when I've got the exact same product listed on Redbubble for less money, people still go on to Etsy and they buy it. So it's been weird, but it's a weird quirk. And I think the reason for that is a combination of the two following points. One is the SEO is fantastic on Etsy. If you type in virtually any print on demand search term, you're going to get back something on Etsy. So Etsy's SEO to me is absolutely top notch. Another reason is I think the customers going on to Etsy, they want to buy from a human being. The perception is that they're buying from you, the seller, not a nameless, faceless company like a TeePublic or a Redbubble. And that's great for you as a seller because what you can do now is sell that t-shirt on Etsy. And if you're worried about markups and you know it's a bit more expensive, that sometimes is not really a problem. The big downside to Etsy, I've got two. One is that you need to print and ship the product yourself. Etsy will not print and ship the product. So if you're a beginner to print on demand, I would not recommend Etsy because now you're fielding questions, you're working with a print on demand supplier. It can be a lot for a new person. The other piece about Etsy that I just don't really have the time for anymore is the customer service piece. For every sale that I made on Etsy, I probably fielded 10 to 15 emails from people who are asking about the products. What size is this? What's the cotton thread count? How big is the coffee mug? Is it left-handed or right-handed? Blah, blah, blah. And they're not making a, you're not making a sale. You're just fielding questions all day long. Well, I already have a job. So if you're looking for something that's a bit more customer intensive, then Etsy can be a great option. Because if you establish that relationship with the customer, then great, you might have a loyal client for years. But if you're not interested in sitting there in the evening 
firing through a bunch of email responses about your products, then Etsy might not be the greatest fit for you. Another big downside to Etsy is if you are selling things with a print-on-demand supplier, remember, you're the one printing and shipping it. If the customer's not happy, you're the one taking the return. It's not Etsy's problem. It's your problem. So what I would recommend overall, if you're a beginner and you're thinking, well, where do I start? What's the easiest way that I'll get the most bang for my buck? I would recommend Redbubble. I think Redbubble is a great combination of ease of use, a lot of products that are available, and it's completely free to join, and you can try it out. And if you make a couple sales, great, but at least you can figure out if you actually enjoy the process. If you're looking at potential, then what I recommend is Amazon. And what I mean by Amazon are both merch by Amazon, so that's the t-shirt and the garment piece of Amazon, and then also Amazon KDP. And Amazon KDP is the faction of Amazon that sells books, low content books. And I think these two have incredible potential. Now, again, they're highly competitive, but you want to make sure to niche down. Now, I didn't cover every single possible option in the print on demand world. So if you've got a suggestion or an opinion, if you agree or disagree, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Please do throw your comment down in the comments below. So I'd love to hear what you think. So thanks a lot for watching. Here's another video on how you can supercharge your print-on-demand experience.